Now at 10, it's election day in Missouri. We'll see who Republican voters in the show me state chose as a nominee. Plus, the Joplin Interfaith Coalition hosts its annual bake sale fundraiser for local students. And music lovers gather in Carthage for the four state record show. The four states most watched news starts now. Kansas state lawmakers consider a bill that would provide $40 million to help combat homelessness at the local level. This is KOM News at 10. I'm Elise Snowy. The House Bill 2723 would create a new program under the state's Department for Aging and Disability Services. That program would provide grants to local governments to build or improve homeless shelters and services. The House Committee on Welfare Reform will hold a hearing on the bill on Tuesday. Meteorologist Lindsay Gaffney joins us for a first look at weather. Well, we've had a pretty warm day today. It got up to 79 degrees with our low this morning being about 40 degrees. Not quite reaching record levels. However, we are well above average for this time of year. Now we don't see any rain on the forecast until Monday. We see this system just west of Denver making its way into our area Monday morning around 10 a.m. Also pulling some moisture from the Gulf. So we're going to see quite a bit of rain chances in the next week. Starting tonight, we do see uh, pretty fast wind gusts and that's going to continue through the weekend. But I'll bring you more updates in just a bit. All right, we'll see you soon, Lindsay. Voters across Missouri gathered today for the Republican Presidential Caucus. KOM Samantha Walker attended the Jasper County Caucus to see what the process looked like and hear from voters. I'm just here to let my uh, voice be heard as an American voter. Missouri voters may be used to doing a presidential preference primary where they nominate a president by filling out a ballot. But after state representatives failed to vote to implement the primary this year, the only option was to hold a caucus in all 114 counties to select a Republican nominee. It's kind of old school doing it this way as in a caucus, and it's the first time I've done one. I've never done a caucus before, um, so I wanted to find out all about it. To join the caucus, participants had to be a registered voter in their county, have a current government-issued photo ID, and be willing to sign a statement saying they were a Republican. Each caucus started at 10 a.m., and voters had to be signed in by then to join. It is a lot of time to come to a caucus and do this, so you know who's really devoted to uh, seeing the best done for our country. I've uh, had texts and emails from people that are not very pleased about the process that the state put forth this year. Caucus voters each select the nominated candidate they would like to win, and their votes are counted at the caucus. Former President Donald J. Trump won the nomination in counties across Missouri. Our official numbers for the 442 citizens of Jasper County, Donald J. Trump 419. Well, I see a lot of people that really care about their country. They care about their freedom, and they're, uh, they're doing their part in what they feel is right to uh, support our democracy. Reporting in Jasper County, Samantha Walker, KWM News. Delegates selected at today's caucus will cast their votes at the district convention April 6th. The state convention will then follow on May 4th. You can find more information about this year's election season on our website, kwmnewsnow.com slash elections. Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley holds a rally in North Carolina ahead of Super Tuesday. The former South Carolina governor spoke to voters in Raleigh today. Despite her loss in the Missouri caucuses today and her home state, South Carolina, a week earlier, Haley is still in the race. In Raleigh, she spoke on inflation, blaming it on Democrats and Republicans, also taking a jab at Congress, calling it the most privileged nursing home in the nation. Well, the presidential campaign kicks into a higher gear with a busy week of primaries and events on deck next week. And for one candidate especially, it could be a make or a make or break moment. Corinne Kaifa is in Washington to break it all down.
Dueling visits to the Super Tuesday state of Texas and the U.S. southern border with Mexico Thursday were another sign that President Joe Biden and former President Donald Trump have set the table for a 2020 rematch this November. I understand my predecessor's an eagle pass today. What he's done to our country is he's destroying our country. But Trump still has a Republican challenger in the race, and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley told reporters Friday she raised another $12 million in February. Crucial cash as she tries to pull off at least one win on Tuesday when more than a dozen states head to the polls. How many more times do we have to lose before we start to say maybe Donald Trump is the problem? Haley's path to the GOP nomination narrows with each loss to Trump as the former president outpaces her delegate total. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden has an opportunity to tout his administration's accomplishments before a major national audience Thursday when he's poised to deliver his State of the Union address on Capitol Hill. The president sees this as an incredibly important opportunity, not just to address Congress, but also uh, to uh, uh, to address the American people, millions of people. The White House says that the election year speech will continue to be drafted over the next week. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. The Biden administration announced it would delay a key part of its signature climate plan under until after the presidential election. The Environmental Protection Agency said it will move forward with finalizing standards to cut emissions from existing coal and new natural gas plants this spring. However, the EPA said it will cut existing gas plants out of the proposed regulation and begin work immediately on a separate rule for existing gas plants. Two U.S. officials say the U.S. has begun airdropping humanitarian aid into Gaza. According to one U.S. official, a total of 66 bundles were dropped from three U.S. C-130 tr transport planes Saturday. The bundles contained 38,000 meals, but no water or medical supplies. President Biden announced yesterday that the U.S. would begin the airdrop soon after saying that nowhere nearly enough aid is entering Gaza. Coming up, Mirza Shriners in Pittsburgh host a family night out for the community. Plus, local vinyl collectors and music lovers spend the day at the Four State Record Show. We'll take you there. Folks in Joplin today were able to get a sweet treat and support students in need at the same time. The Joplin Interfaith Coalition hosted its annual bake sale to benefit Joplin Bright Futures. The coalition consists of groups from several religious affiliations coming together to support the community. Today's bake sale helps Bright Futures support local students living in poverty to have opportunities for success. Um, it's great to bring the community together uh, with the Interfaith Coalition. It's just learning about everyone's faiths, and I think it's a really important thing, um, especially something like this. Food brings everyone together, and so this is an event where we can all come here, find some awesome food that is hard to find in our area, homemade Middle Eastern food and things like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's Bright Futures reaps the rewards this year. It's, it's awesome. There were also board games, face painting, and a silent auction at the event. The Mirza Shriners in Pittsburgh today held a family night out. It included inflatables, quarter pit, face painting, giant Jenga, and a free lunch. Along with playing those games, those in attendance were able to learn about the Mirza Shriners organization and the support they provide for area children in need. We're not charging anything. We wanted to give back to the community. The community is so good to us. When we're doing fundraisers, we wanted to give something back to the kids, just have some fun, let them do their thing, and just be a, a relaxing afternoon. The organization has been serving families in Southeast Kansas for more than 100 years. Four State music lovers were able to add some new tunes to their collection at the Four State Records show. The Carthage Memorial Hall hosted the event. Attendees were able to visit vendors showing cassettes, CDs, equipment, memorabilia, and vinyls. There's other people like you that care about music, that, that want to grow, you know, the whole experience. If you like one band, you can go down the rabbit hole and find the bands that the other members were in, you know, and there's just a lot of music out there. The event offered various vinyls as door prizes throughout the day. 
A little later, College Heights basketball takes on Hartville in the Class 2 quarterfinals. John Dales will have the highlights in the game in sports. And we've got a pretty wet week ahead. I'll have more details up next after the break. Well, today and tomorrow will be pretty warm, so we're seeing a nice, warm, sunny weekend right before an entire week of rain. Taking a look outside at the Indigo Sky Casino and Resort camera, it is a clear night. We don't see any clouds rolling in just yet. That's not going to come in until Monday when we see the rain start to make its way in. So right now it's still west of Denver making its way into our area Monday around 10 a.m. It's also going to be pulling some moisture from the Gulf. So we're going to see quite a bit of rain in our area for pretty much all week next week. Now the last few days we've seen pretty cold temperatures after that cold front passed, dropping those highs down to 55. Now we're starting to see this warming up with our high today being in the upper 70s. Tomorrow we're going to see temperatures possibly breaking 80 degrees, maybe matching or beating a record. Now tonight our low is going to be 58 degrees and it is going to be very windy. We see winds picking up across the region about 40, 45 miles per hour, and then still after midnight, gusting upwards of 50 miles per hour. So it's going to be a pretty breezy night ahead. Now it's going to continue on through the weekend. However, Sunday afternoon dying down a little bit, seeing gusts only up to about 35 miles per hour, picking up again just before the rain does start to make its way through. Once that happens, winds die down quite a bit. Now let's take a closer look at the rain we see coming in 10 a.m. on Monday. Just some light showers across the region in the central counties picking up a little bit as we move into that evening. Depending on how this system wants to track, maybe it'll track a little bit more south. But right now it's just heavier rainfall in the eastern counties Monday night. Now throughout the next couple of days, we're going to have some intermittent showers Tuesday around 2 p.m. Some more showers. Now Wednesday we'll have a break until that night after midnight is when we start to see the rain make its way in. It's going to be the heaviest amount of rainfall on Thursday covering the area 830 AM on Thursday. You're going to wake up to quite heavy showers across the region. Now it's going to continue on Thursday two in the afternoon. Still heavy showers a break as we move into the afternoon, but Thursday PM it's going to be possible thunderstorm chances and that's going to continue until Friday morning. We'll see showers lighten up Friday, but they'll eventually make their way out Friday afternoon around 6 p.m. So like I said, pretty great chances of rain across the week, Monday through Friday with the heaviest rain falling Thursday and into Friday morning. Now it's well needed, but we do see a break in the rain next weekend, Saturday, Sunday and Monday back to sunny skies. We definitely need that rain, but I'll never complain about some sunshine. No, nope, me either. All right, thanks, Lindsay. Well, Jake Belay is warning customers to throw out one of its sauces. The fast food chain says Polynesian sauce dipping cups ordered between February 14th to the 27th actually have a different sauce that includes wheat and soy allergens. Customers are advised to call Chick-fil-A Cares at 1-866-232-2040 with any questions. Chick-fil-A says it has offered the sauce since 1984. A mouthwash product is on the recall list for risks of poisoning children. The Consumer Product Safety Commission reports that more than 100,000 bottles of Heritage Store Hydrogen Peroxide mouthwash are included in the recall. The agency says the mouthwash contains ethanol levels that are too high for children and the packaging is not child resistant. The product was sold at various stores and online from October 2010 to December 2023. Still ahead, several of our local high school basketball teams play for sub-state and district championships. John Dales has highlights and scores from all the day's top games up next in sports. College Heights boys basketball lost its final game of the regular season, but from that point forward has won four in a row, leading the Cougars to the Class 2 quarterfinals. College Heights taking on Hartville at Ozark Christian. Winner goes on to the Final Four in Columbia, but the Eagles land the first few punches. Grant Culver pulls the trigger from the top of the key and connects. 
Later on in the first, Jalen Cryer drains a three from the same spot. Hartville opens up a 10 point lead in the first quarter. Cougars not gonna go away. Beautiful play design on the pass from Caleb Quaddy leads to a Broderick Burns bucket. Then, right out of halftime, Adam Stanton steps into a three and drains it. That caps a 5-0 run, brings the Cougars within 11. Fourth quarter, the senior, Colson Dickens, finishes a reverse layup and trims the deficit back to 12. But Hartsville made the final four last year, lost only two games this season, and just a bit too much for the Cougars to handle today. College Heights has its season come to an end, a win away from the final four. The Cougars fall in the quarterfinals. 49 to 31. Staying in Missouri, we go to the Class 4 District 12 championship between Seneca, last year's winner, and Aurora, last year's runner-up. A rematch of last year's district title. Seneca faces Aurora in a win or go home game. Opening quarter, Cannon Thornhill fires from beyond the arc and hits for three. Hound Dogs lead by three, but quickly on the other end, Zane Broadjohn answers with a three-pointer of his own. Seneca ties the game. Over to the second quarter now, Jace Schulte on the fast break. He crashes hard into the lane, count the bucket plus the foul. Still in the second, big man Jaden Carpenter gets a huge block at the basket. Then on the other end, Carpenter gets the rebound and the putback. Aurora down just four at halftime. But in the second half, Seneca starts to pull away. Ethan Altick knocks down a mid-range jumper. Then Blake Hearn going to work inside the paint, gets the bucket plus the foul. Seneca wins big. The Indians defeat Aurora 81-55 to claim the district championship. They just have been experienced and it's hard to go and go back to back. Some people go their whole careers without winning them. And so um, these guys know how to win. They played the a big games their whole lives. So they, they're unselfish. They play really hard. And so um, it's not easy. And these guys, these guys know how to do it. Yeah, there was a lot of excitement. Student sections popped out. You know, it was a rematch from last year. And uh, it just feels good to get that win over them again and get, move on to the next chapter. Another district title game in Missouri, Nevada Boys Basketball has its season come to an end. The Tigers lose to St. Michael the Archangel 72-49. Now let's move over to Kansas. We start in Class 2A with the girls sub-stay tournament in Cherokee. No surprise here, Colgan remains undefeated. The Lady Panthers beat Southeast 58-31. They advance to the Class 2A state tournament in Dodge City. In the boys game though, how about this from Erie, the Red Devils, the three seed in the tournament, take down Colgan, the number one seed, one of the top ranked teams in Class 2A all season. Red Devils win at 50-48, they're going to state. Now to Class 3A and the Caney Valley sub-state, twice in the regular season, Gerard and Riverton played each other and twice the Trojans win, but the Rams when it, when it matters most, they're going to take it 52 to 40 and they're heading to state in Hutchinson. Now to the girls game, Gerard, the top seed in the tournament, looked like it tonight. The Lady Trojans win by 14 over Cherryville. They advance to the Class 3A state tournament in Hutchinson. Elsewhere in girls 3A, Neo Deche made it to the sub-state title game against Cheney, kept it close all the way through, but comes up just short, 47 to 38, the final. The Lady Streaks season ends tonight. Boys Class 4A East Sub-State title game. Fort Scott takes down Chanute 49-43. Both the Tigers boys and girls teams punch their tickets to state this weekend. Staying in boys Class 4A East bracket. Parsons won on Wednesday over Eudora to earn a trip to the title game. But the Vikings season ends tonight with a 64-37 loss to top seed Atchison. Then finally, girls 5A. Pittsburgh girls drop a tough one, 47 to 41, to Blue Valley Southwest in the sub-state title game. Their season ends, but the Purple Dragons can hang their hats on the massive upset win they got in the semifinals just to reach tonight. Let's go to college basketball. On the women's side, not the senior day that Pittsburgh State or Missouri Southern was hoping for. Gorillas fall to Missouri Western by seven. The Lions lose to Northwest by the same margin. And on the men's side, Pitt State wins a double overtime thriller, 86-83 over Missouri Western. The Lions, though, lose at home to number six, Northwest Missouri. All four of them will play in the MIAA tournament this coming week. That's a look at sports. We'll be back after this.
A Missouri couple was just days away from their wedding, but their unborn baby had other plans. The soon to be bride went into labor five weeks early, so the couple said I do between contractions in the delivery room. Jan Moose reports on this special delivery. All right, you ready? There's nothing unusual about marrying when you're in love, but how about when you're in labor? Now, since we have a baby on the way, let's get to the ideas. I do. I do. Also do was this little guy. Police officer Sarah Perry's water broke five weeks early, just days before their scheduled wedding. The couple rushed to St. Luke's East Hospital in Missouri and ended up getting married in their room. Literally in between contractions. The contractions were seven minutes apart. The groom struggled putting on a ring. Pregnancy swells the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you wearing? I was wearing St. Luke's East finest sheets uh, from their bed. The bedsheet bride made a sort of toga. They had to finish the wedding in half an hour because Sarah had to be prepped for delivery. The nurses whipped up decorations, hung lights on the IV stand. The nurses told the couple that an ordained minister was with his pregnant wife on the same floor and had offered to officiate. Mr. and Mrs. Perry, and you may kiss the bride. <laughs> there was even wedding cake from the hospital cafeteria. And though preparing for the wedding was quick, the pushing part of labor was even quicker. Come on, it wasn't quicker than half an hour, right? <laughs> uh, like yeah. five minutes. Sarah even tossed a bouquet held together with gauze. Yeah! Caught by one of the nurses. As for the guest list. Yeah! Thank you all for coming. We said anyone was welcome that could make it. But the guest of honor, little Oliver, arrived nine and a half hours after the wedding. You may kiss your son. He's wonderful. That is so sweet. And I don't know, that bedsheet bride might be like a new bridal trend in the it future. It could be, yeah. This day, you know. All righty. <laughs> Final look at the forecast. So tonight and tomorrow, we're going to have pretty windy d days seeing up to 45 miles per hour. Now, all week long, we've got rain chances with the heaviest amount of rain Thursday for the entire day and into Friday clearing by Friday afternoon, just in time for another sunny weekend. That'll be our third weekend in a row. That sounds absolutely perfect <laughs> to me. All right, thanks, Lindsay. That's our time for now. From all of us here in the studio, have a great evening.